talking about different examples, some with individuals, but I wanted to turn to one dealing with a company. In chapter one, you talk about one of these parking brake situations through the lens of Procter & Gamble, a company I actually know a ton about because when I was at Catalina Marketing, they were our biggest customer. But for those who don't know all the brands that they have, one of them is Tide, and they have a product probably many of you use called their Tide Pods, but they were having a huge PR problem. And Jenna, maybe you can talk to the audience about the issue that they were having, yeah. P&G's response, and why did people not only ignore it, but actually work to combat it, which just shocks me. Yeah. As you mentioned, a number of years ago, Tide, which is owned by Procter & Gamble, was trying to change the way that people do laundry. I've done laundry today, actually, and so we all agree it's probably not that difficult. But there are some things that could be easier, right? You never know exactly how much detergent to add. It's often quite sticky and either gets on your hands or the counter. And it turns out to be better if some of the detergent went in the beginning of the cycle and some of the detergent went in later in the cycle. But with traditional sort of powder or liquid detergent, you can't make that work. And so Tide spent a bunch of money on R&D and they end up coming up with these colorful pods that they call Tide Pods. Basically set it and forget it. Take one of these wonderful colorful squares, chuck them in the laundry, and it solves all the problems we just talked about. And so they spent over $100 million on marketing, and they hoped they could take a big chunk of the over billion dollar laundry industry. And so Tide Pods come out, and they're doing okay, but then they hit a snag, which is that people are eating them. And I'd like to pause here for just a second because some of your listeners might be going, what do you mean people are eating them? Aren't they filled with chemicals? And yes, indeed, they are filled with chemicals. And yes, people were eating them. There was a video online that showed them melted on top of a pizza. There was a funny picture that showed what looked like to be people eating them. And suddenly, mostly young people were challenging one another to eat Tide Pods. Okay, it was called the Tide Pod Challenge. Now imagine, as you suggested, you're a Tide executive in this situation. You're sitting there going, well, I mean, what, what do we do? People should know not to eat Tide Pods, but just in case, let's do what companies often do when they don't know what else to do, which is we'll release a press release because that'll solve everything. And so they put out a press release saying, as you can guess already, don't eat Tide Pods. In case that's not enough, they say, okay, well, what else should we do? They do what companies often also do when they don't know what to do, which is hire a celebrity. They hired Rob Gronk Gronkowski of used to be New England Patriots, more recently Tampa Bay Buccaneers fame to shoot a public service announcement again, telling people don't eat Tide Pods, right? And so they told people not to do it. Gronk told people not to do it. They thought that would be enough. Well, interestingly enough, if you look at the data, look at sort of searches for the Tide Pod challenge over time or Tide Pods in general, you notice an interesting pattern. It's kind of, they're going up a little bit up until the moment which Tide releases their announcement. And Tide is hoping that their announcement will stem the tide of the interest in the Tide Pod Challenge. But that's not actually what happens. In fact, just the opposite, right? Interest in the Tide Pod Challenge shoots up over 400%. Visits to poison control go up as well. In the next two weeks, more people come into poison control than had in the two years prior. And very simply, a warning becomes a recommendation. Telling people not to do something actually makes them more likely to do it. And I love this story. It's a really interesting story. But I also love it because people often say, well, what does this have to do with me though, right? I'm trying to get people probably to do something, not to do something. And by the way, I don't work for Tide. I don't care about Tide Pods. So what does this have to do with me? But the underlying insight behind this story, the underlying driver behind behavior is much broader than Tide and the Tide Pods. The idea here is this is just one example of a phenomenon psychologists would call reactance. When pushed, whether to do something or not to do something, people often push back. They often do the exact opposite of what we want them to do. And so the challenge is both to understand the science of reactants, why people react against others, and more importantly, what we can do about it. 